Welcome to Grace Baptist. We're glad you're here this morning. Uh, Stuart, while you're standing up, would you please open us in prayer? <laughs> Father in heaven, thank you for this day that we can gather together. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. We thank you that we can worship you freely and thank you for the safe travels and the weather, Lord. Um, we ask that you would bless the service and that we would be able to focus on you, Father. Um, and that you would bless our travels home to your son's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Welcome everybody, and uh, if you weren't at Sunday school this morning, I'd encourage you to be here next week. I will uh, tell you that you are missing out spiritually. You are uh, suffering, struggling if you're not here for your Sunday school. It is uh, an incredible time of, um, well, it's, it's encouraging uh, as well, but it's an, an incredible time uh, spiritually for our growth. Uh, and our maturity. So I would encourage you to be here as well as Wednesday nights. We have our service uh, for prayer uh, and again fellowship time. I would encourage you to be here for that uh, as well. So if you would please stand with me. We're going to sing. Oh, excuse me. We're going to sing hymn number 40. Great is thy faithfulness. Hymn number 40. Stand with me. We'll sing all three verses.
Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. This time I'll have Danny come on up and pray for us. All right, join me in prayer as we seek the Lord's hand over our search for a new shepherd. Lord, again, we just come before you as a congregation, just thanking you, Lord, for the ministry that this church has had here since its inception, Lord, and that you, your hand has been upon us, Lord, in proclaiming uh, the faithfulness of who you are, Lord, and your word. Lord, during this time, we just ask for your continued blessing upon Pastor and Deb as they do continue to shepherd this church and minister to the saints here, Lord, and that you will encourage them and strengthen them, bless them while they're away and resting at this time, Lord. Father, we... As we turn towards the future, we ask that your hand be upon us as we, uh, as we do search for a new shepherd to lead us into the future. We ask, Lord, that you will keep us united, that you will, um, just in your perfect time, uh, bring forth uh, a man, Lord, who uh, just has a desire to preach your word, Lord, to minister to this church and to the community around us, Lord. So continue to guide us and uplift us as a congregation. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Danny. I trust that you are all praying that daily, or at least in your weekly lives as we do this. This is a great undertaking. Uh, turn with me to, let me get the hymn right here. Uh, hymn number 413, you can stand again. Hymn number 413, sound the battle cry. We will again sing all three verses. Just for a few announcements here, um, we had a couple of beloved saints go home this week. Um, Sandy Quance's committal is Friday at 11. That'll be at the East Palmyra Cemetery. Uh, and the memorial service will be on the 27th. That'll be here at Grace. I don't have a, a time for that yet. Uh, we will get that out when we have one. Uh, Harold Barber, I don't have a date for his either. His service will be down in Olean, uh, and we will get you more information when that comes along. Uh, but be thinking of both of their families in this time. Uh, I know we also have, uh, where's Rachel? She's back there. We have a woman's clothing, uh, I don't know what she wants to call it. I'll let you give a quick announcement on that.
Fantastic. February 10th. Um, if you're on snow shoveling, I we got the list out so you'll know about that. Are there any other announcements that I don't know of? Yes, Missy. Um, Okay. So. Thank you. Covered. Okay. <laughs> Covered. Thank you. Uh, did you have your hand up, so? The business meeting. Yes, that's the 24th, correct? Yes. Okay. Business meeting is on the 24th. Uh, again, we would like all of you there. We are going over. We're finalizing our constitutional amendments that we've made uh, regarding creation and marriage and. Um, genders, different things. Uh, anyways, just some specifications that we made, and so we're finalizing those. Uh, so we encourage you all to be there so that you can uh, be a part of that. And if you're giving reports, please bring them. Okay. If you can't bring them, send them to me. I will take them out. Okay. Also, so have your reports done. Uh, as well as we have, we have a service every Wednesday. We would encourage you guys to be there for at 7 o'clock. Uh, as well as I said, um, Sunday mornings at 9.45, we do Sunday school. Uh, we have it for all ages, and it is, uh, I won't say it's, it's more blessed than our Sunday morning services, but I, I find that the Sunday school time to be an, a, a tremendous blessing and a tremendous time of growth. So uh, for me personally, I would encourage you all to be there, and uh, it, there's no, like, nobody's keeping tabs or anything, but I would encourage you to be there. So any other announcements? Nothing? All right, gentlemen, come on forward and we'll take our tithes and offerings. Yeah, that's not until next week, I don't think. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Uh, one of, David, would you have some blessing? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for today and uh, helping get us all here safely. I pray that you'd uh, bless our tithes and offering, that they would uh, be give joyously, Lord, to you, back to you. That, all the blessings that you've blessed us. Praise in Jesus Christ's name. Claire, I love that song, and I thank you to all of our people who play instruments. Carl, he wasn't done, but thank you to you too as well. It's always beautiful. We're going to sing one more hymn here, uh, hymn number 428. Hymn number 428, and I'll ask you to stand one more time with me. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4.
appreciate you all bearing with me. You may be seated. Do we have someone taking our children this morning? Yes, Christina's back there. So children, you may be dismissed for junior church. And at this time, we will have Ted come and speak to us this morning. He's got a, a big book here, so I hope you brought lunch and possibly dinner. And uh, we look forward to it. Thanks, Ted. Get to that point where it's like, do I wear, do I put my glasses on or don't I? You know, I don't know. I think I'll have to have them on. But I'll, I'll preface this by saying I got two good things to tell you. Um, usually it's like I got good news and bad news, but two good news. One, the Bills game is postponed <laughs> till tomorrow. So uh, if I go like an hour and a half, right, you're not going to be jumping out the back pews and escaping, oh, I gotta go see the Bills game. That won't happen, right? Because um, there's no game this afternoon. Okay, so that's good news. The other good news is, since I had a book here, uh, and it was gonna be like an hour and a half long, I decided to cut it in half, and you're spared. I'm just gonna do a part one and a part two, perhaps, at some other time. So we'll get through it. Um, for today, we'll see how far I go. I'll keep an eye on the clock. Oh my goodness, we're already. <laughs> so now I know why Pastor is like, oh, and he goes long, but um, I'll just stop when I need to stop, and um, it, it'll be good. It's I just keep hey, several of you passed me, I guess, this morning <laughs> because I kept. I, I had this, I had a thought, and I'm going to add to it, and uh, I thought I better pull over and, and write it in my notes, because it'll just vaporize like my thoughts and write it down. So just keep, I just keep adding to it. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of good stuff. So I'll just get right into it. We'll get we'll get where we get to today. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Uh, uh, and I haven't spoken up here in, uh, the last time I was up here I gave a, a message was 11 years ago, so I'm sorry if I'm doing this too often, but uh, once every 11 years shouldn't be too bad. <laughs> um, but uh, what I'm going to speak on is running the race, okay? As most of you know, I'm a pretty devoted runner. Um, a little bit about my background, uh, I never ran in school. I never ran in college. Um, I was just a little pipsqueak kind of a guy, and I did some wrestling and all, but uh, um, I never ran. And uh, I moved out after college. I um, was in Ponca City, Oklahoma, kind of the cornerstone of Nowheresville, and uh, working for Conoco. And I just kind of ran just to stay in shape, something to do. Was a single guy. Uh, nothing going on out there. Um, so I just started casually running uh, at that time. My first race was a company held just a little one mile run. Okay, on Thanksgiving morning out in Ponca City. Uh, just the company guys. And I thought, I'm in shape. Well, or so I thought, and yeah, no big deal, one mile, <laughs> big deal. I've, I remember at that time, because you know, it's on a track, so I'm not really familiar with track running or anything, but give it a shot. I do the first lap, and I'm in first place. There's like 15 people, you know, all these old guys, right? I'm just... so, <laughs> um, so I'm like, yeah, first lap, boom, ah, starting to feel it. Second lap, this ain't too easy. People are catching up to me. Third lap, I'm sucking wind. <laughs> it's not good. People are passing me. I'll get them at the end, right? One more lap to go. Pfft, forget it. I was like second to last, practically puking. You know, every, I'm like all these guys are eh, zooming by me. You know, their little streamers and bell whistles and stuff. Ah, look at that young guy. <laughs> it was not pretty. Um, 
so uh, I ended up, it was Thanksgiving morning I mentioned, so I ate a lot of crow that day for Thanksgiving. Um, and it was a pretty humiliating experience. Um, so fast forward to today, however, um, I've run over 300 races. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I finished a 31 mile race, a cross country race. And while running the race, uh, I, uh, it was a lot of time I had alone running the trails. Uh, and uh, it was, it's, a, it's a long race, 31 miles. And so I had a lot of time to, to focus on running the race, different things such as life, religion, politics, world events, family. Uh, at the same time, you're continually monitoring your own body, your system, how am I doing? Uh, am I running too fast, too slow? Where's my competition? Uh, what's, what's the time? Um, am I slowing down? Uh, bodily systems that you're monitoring. Um, so I'm thinking about how can I accomplish this race the best way possible. Mulling over these facets of running the race, I've come to realize that over the years that how closely running a foot race or really any, any physical endeavor that you're involved with uh, mirrors our journey in life. And the Bible really has a lot to say about this comparison as well. So let's, let's delve into these ideas that I've come up with. Um, as I mentioned, even this morning, I'm jotting down a few more ideas uh, on the road. And, and even this morning in Sunday school, uh, Joel was mentioning Sunday school. And it's a, it's a great time. That we Sunday school is more interactive, so we can ask questions, we can you know banter a little bit, talk about ideas, and uh, it's it's a good way of, of of fellowship and and really digging into the Bible. It's, it's good stuff. So I, again, like Joel said, I'm encouraging you to attend there and all the other uh, uh, church functions that we have. Um, so mind you, uh, we can substitute any. Any physical endeavor uh, or endurance event uh, that you have, and when I say running, it could be hiking, biking, swimming, weightlifting, anything like that. So, um, as I mentioned, 31 miles uh, in that race, I've just mentioned uh, that's defined as an ultra. Anything longer than 26.2 miles, a marathon is an ultra marathon. In this race of life, uh, some of us here have are, are just starting out. In life, some of our younger crew, um, but some of us have been in it for quite a long time. Our elderly people. There's a difference in the sporting event with our lives, however. In the physical event, we know where the end is. Okay, it's a defined thing. Um, we know where the finish line is. In life, however, we don't particularly know where the end is. To us, it's a mystery, but to God, it's a known fact. But however long the journey is, there can be rewards at the end. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 8, I'll just read this. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, in this our, our earthly, our tent, we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked, for we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a, guide, or as a guarantee. So we are in always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Most, of us, most all of us are nervous today uh, before a competition or an event, right? say before a test or any event, we kind of get nervous. But we can, we, we can do this. We psych ourselves up. We, we do all kinds of things. But God gives us what we need. 
Grace, God's riches at Christ's expense, getting what we don't deserve is grace. God helps us with that. Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, one of my favorite verses. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of thyselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's funny. Uh, just coming in this morning, I had on Family Life Network, and the announcer uh, just quoted that verse just out of the blue. I said, oh, wow, he's, he was reading my notes. <laughs> but uh, that's a great verse. Um, Philippians 4, 19 says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I guess my thought here is that God has given us gifts and talents to perform the work that he has for us to do. If God calls you to a task, to do a task, rest assured, rest assured that you can do it. God doesn't make mistakes, all right? God has given us our individual talents. We can conquer these endeavors. We can do this. We can finish the race. And we'll talk a little bit more about this as I go along. So in doing this race and preparing for this race, we, what? We have to do a lot of preparation. Um, and I'm thinking about my, my races. My wife Karen can attest. I get a little nervous before a race, uh, but there's a, kind of a lot involved. Anybody that has done a physical event, you know, wrestling or, or whatever, you prepare for it and uh, you, you plan for it. You have preparation. Um, just some of these items, packing, okay, what's in my gym bag? Do I have everything I need for the race in the gym bag? Clothes, my right shoes, food and drink, snacks and stuff. Uh, do I have my watch that I can time myself? Um, do I have the, the car gassed up? Is it ready to go? Uh, do I know the route to it? You know, um, do I, am I going to leave on time so I'm not late? You know, all these things, scheduling costs. You know, am I, am I, have I signed up for the race or am I going to have to pay for it when I get there? Blah, blah, blah. There's lots of stuff. So preparation. The Bible is full of examples regarding preparation. Um, we just read 2 Corinthians 5, 5, For he who has prepared for us this very thing is God, who has also given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Exodus 16, 5, The Hebrews in the wilderness, right? And the miracle of manna for food. It says, And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Okay, so remember, they weren't supposed to gather on, on the Sabbath day. So that day was a day of rest, right? So the, the sixth day, they, they gathered twice as much. And there was miraculously twice as much manna for them to gather. Because remember, after, after the one day, that manna shrivels up and gets sour and gets bad. But they kept it, for, they had enough for two days. And miraculously, that extra day, it didn't, it didn't shrivel up, it, it kept good. So those are miracles, and that's, that's God's preparation that he had for us, okay? Um, so preparation is, is a good thing, all right? We need to be prepared. Uh, as a church body, we need to be prepared when we go out of these walls to meet the world, right? Because it's going to be coming at us, and we'll talk about that as, as well as we go along. 2 Corinthians 14.14 14 says, speaking, we're speaking about the king uh, Rehoboam. He says, and he did evil because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord. Okay, he was a bad king. Um, and things happened to him because he wasn't prepared. He, wasn't, he didn't have his heart set right. And bad things happened to him. So this reminds us of not only preparing material things, but preparing our minds and attitude for the task or event we are about to partake in. Suppose you are about to take um, a test, as I mentioned. You're most nervous, okay, when you have not studied and you're going into a cold. All right, at least that was for me. I had to study a lot uh, in school. Um, even then, I was still pretty nervous. But... Um, you're most nervous when you have not studied and you know you're not going to do well. 
On the flip side, you're most confident and calm when you have studied and you're prepared. You're, you're confident. You know, hey, I got this. I'm ready for it. I've done the homework. I've done the preparation. Um, when I took my CDL tests uh, for bus driving, um, there was there was example tests on the computer that were very similar to the actual tests. So I went through these a couple times and studied and, and prepared for them. So I kind of knew what the what the questions were going to be like and and kind of how to answer the right you know give the right answer. Okay, so that was preparation, and I ended up doing really good on the test. But it's helpful to be prepared. And you're confident when you're prepared, right? It's the same thing with running meeting, and also meeting life's challenge, challenges. And certainly we have plenty of challenges in life. And walking the Christian walk. If you are confident in your relationship with Christ and you know the Bible's teachings, you, you have prepared for the event, you will be calm and ready to face your so-called Goliath with confidence. Can you imagine David? Well, it, it talks about that in the Bible. Did he seem, did he seem uh, um, upset and nervous when he ran out there to meet the Goliath, that giant? No. <laughs> he charged up there. What's this, what's this guy going to do to me that a bear and a lion hasn't, hasn't been able to do? I could slay them. Who's this guy? Okay? God is with me. Um, that's a, that, I didn't even have this in my notes. This is a freebie. <laughs> um, you know, he charged up there. He wasn't afraid. He was prepared. Okay, he knew how to sling, do that sling. Okay? He had practiced. Um, I'd love to see that. I don't know if I've ever seen doing that, but that's, that's pretty cool. And uh, so, boom, he went up there. He wasn't afraid. I would have been. <laughs> Nine foot six or so. Remember when when the missionary uh, it was here and he had that example. That's pretty tall. He's a big guy. I wouldn't want to meet him. But uh, he was prepared. Uh, other examples of being prepared in Mark one verse two, speaking of John the Baptist, as it is written in the prophets, "Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before him." Okay. Um, that's John the Baptist speaking about uh, Jesus Christ. John 14, verses 2 and 3. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And that where I am, there ye may be also. So, God is preparing a place for us in heaven after this life. And uh, I'm pretty excited about going there and seeing what that's going to be like. Pretty amazing. Um, 2 Timothy 2, verse 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Who does Satan target most often? The hardworking Christian, the ones doing the Lord's work, okay? Christians, missionaries. Um, we talked a little bit about this morning in, in Sunday school about the light in the darkness, okay? If you're in a dark field and there might be others in there in dark clothes and stuff, you don't see them. You see the one with the light, okay? When I go out running, uh, a lot of times it's dark, especially you know, this day, uh, this time of year, it's dark, okay? I don't want to get run over <laughs> um, by a car, so I have a headlight on, okay? And maybe some other lights on my body or and reflective clothing and stuff so people can see me. Um, it's it's kind of that way as a Christian, right? When we're out in the world, and, and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit, you're a target. People see you if they know that you're a Christian. Okay? Look at that guy. Okay. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but but um, Satan targets the Christian more often than he targets the non-Christian. The non-Christian, Satan's like, I got him already. I don't need to spend time with him. He's a goner. I got him. 
what's Satan's objective? To kill humans, really. To take their soul. Um, to, to damn them to eternal Christ, uh, non-Christ uh, eternity. Um, so he targets the Christian because they're the ones that he's not going to get. Okay? He wants to make them fall. Um, the Christians, the ones that are preparing and training, right? Hopefully we're doing that. We're preparing and we're training. We're studying and fellowshipping. Okay, we talked about fellowshipping already. Satan, as I mentioned, already has the others, the ones of the world, right? He doesn't need his resources to go after them. But as mentioned, it's the Christian. That's the target. That's his prize. If he can make them fall, he's won. But the Christian who has a daily practice, okay, we're talking about practice and training, the one who has a daily practice of staying in the Word, of praying, of studying, of doing something to further God's kingdom, they are the ones who are better prepared to ward off Satan's attack. Okay, I mentioned about being better prepared, like, like studying for a test, training, running, putting in the miles, doing um, and all that. We're prepared. We got we got to mirror that in our Christian life. Being prepared to thwart off those targets. Okay, those darts from Satan that are attacking us constantly. Some verses uh, uh, regarding that. Joel one seven. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and from the earth, from walking up and down in it. Okay, Satan is not omnipresent. But he gets around pretty quick, I imagine. Okay? And he's targeting us, looking and trying to trip us up. First Peter 5 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Okay? I'm I'm thinking that's that's pretty liberal literal. He wants to devour us, he wants to destroy us. Okay? That's what he wants. Satan is scouring the earth, looking to destroy those that have taken their eyes off the finish line. Those who are not exercising and practicing, training, and staying in good shape, not only physically, but mentally, okay? Those are the ones who will get tripped up, led astray. We need to stay in shape, again, both physically and morally. So training is a preparation. I read earlier 2 Corinthians 5, 2, for in this we groan, okay? Talking about our bodies, our struggle in this life. All right, training isn't easy, right? It's, it's hard work. It's tough. We sweat. <laughs> uh, I just had a bus, bus trip uh, Friday afternoon. I had to pick up, um, Justin will like this one. Wake up, Justin. I had to go to the I had to go to the RIC Ice Hockey Center Friday afternoon picking up the the uh, Victor Varsity hockey team uh, from their practice. Someone had already taken them there. I'm taking them back, and I kind of made a joke when I was taking the kids uh, back in the school. I said, "Oh, you guys, based on the way you guys smell, <laughs> you had a pretty good practice. I'm sure your coach will appreciate that." Um, and, it, you know, I've taken other kids, but I tell you, those hockey guys, they're the stinkiest ones. You have no idea. Well, I have some idea. I mean, they're... You know, I open up my windows because I turn the fans on. I say, God, these guys... Whew, they're, they're, they're skating pretty hard. So, yeah, they, it, it's hard work preparing, training. Uh, it's, it's not easy. We don't want to do that. You know, naturally, we don't want to do that. And we want to lay on our butts and watch the TV, kick back, you know, whatever. They, they had to take, they're taking their time from their personal lives and, and doing this training. Okay, same with training for a Christian life, right? It takes time to read the Bible. It takes time. And I guess I'll, I'll, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but... Um, we're here at church. We're not at home sleeping in and watching TV or doing whatever. So it's not easy. It takes willpower, dedication, resources. 
if you are serious about something, you will work at it, study it, learn it, prepare for it, train for it. Right? We want to get the A's on our test. Um, I remember in college, some of these guys, I don't think they ever cracked a book or studied. It's unbelievable, and they'd get straight A's. <laughs> Me, it wasn't like that. Um, it, it's amazing. But uh, I think I, because I did that, because I trained for it, run. And if I do well, it means that much more to me, okay? Um, so our Christian life is, is similar to that. We have to uh, train for it and spend time. Uh, I made a note here just in Sunday school this morning. Uh, we talked about strength. Uh, Colossians 1.11, I've got that here. It says, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. Unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Um, Gary was talking this morning about about this. <laughs> I think we spent all morning. <laughs> we got one verse, right? <laughs> we got we got one verse, and, and here and there and all around. But um, so talk about strengthening. Okay, talk about glorious power, patience, and long suffering. Going back to joyfulness, okay? So, long-suffering, patience. It, it, like I mentioned, it's, this is, a, this is a, a marathon. It's a long journey. It's not a, it's not a sprint, okay? Um, we're, in it, we're in it for life. We're going to be tested on this, right? We're being tested probably almost daily. Uh, it's called sin, and we're, we're tested on that. Do we succumb or do we not? How well did you do? Will you give up or you, will you dig in deeper and strive to improve on it? It's that way with the athletic pr preparation. It's that way with our Christian preparation. Like a lot of things, it can boil down to what are our priorities, okay? My wife often tells me that my priorities are a little bit skewed, right? You do. <laughs> I often run very early in the morning. A lot of times I run in the evening uh, or in the afternoon when the schedule doesn't permit a morning or evening. So you need to train practice in order to get better or at least to maintain a certain level of ability. It's the same way with, say, playing an instrument or anything that takes skill or it doesn't come naturally. We have to train, we have to keep practice, um, just just be ready. If And this also just came about, I was talking with Andrew this morning. If, if, if I don't train, if I don't run for a day or two, I get a little antsy, I get a little nervous, edgy, because I haven't run. And I know that it's gonna affect my running times. Okay, I'm just gonna get slower. Um, or not as prepared as I should be. Okay, so I need, I, I feel it, I gotta run, I gotta run. Okay. How is it with our personal lives if, if, we, don't, if we don't take time and read the Bible? Okay. You, you notice that? Something missing maybe? Something out of your life? Um, you, you haven't, you know, you haven't opened up His Word and uh, maybe you're missing something, and, and maybe God wants maybe God wants me to learn something from His Word, and I'm avoiding it. I'm, I'm not opening up this, and uh, maybe I'm missing out. All right. So this, this is this is God's Word. It, it's it's a miracle. Think about the Bible. It's it's a miracle how this came about. And, and, and Vance just gave a great, great session in Sunday school about our different versions and stuff and, the, and the, the people that dedicated their lives, literally their lives a lot of times, in getting us this written word, okay? And if we ignore this, if we ignore God's word, how selfish can we be? Oh, I, I don't need that. I can, I can do this my own. On my own, I can get through this life without my training, without my preparation, without the knowledge that that God wants for me. 
I don't need this. How many times have we gone into a, uh, someone's house? You see a couple Bibles on their, in their library. Ah, oh, you got a Bible. You know they don't read it. It's up there collecting dust. You know? And, uh, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. I, I've, got a, I've got a Bible. That makes me a Christian, right? <laughs> yeah. You can sleep in your garage. That makes you a, a, a Volkswagen. No, it doesn't. <laughs> You're not a Volkswagen. Okay? Um, am I a Christian just because I own a Bible in my library? No. No, we need to get back to God's Word and we need to read it. We need to study, pr prepare for it. And if you don't read the Bible, read God's Word, or do some kind of studying, um, you know, you're missing out, I'm saying. You're not prepared. Okay, you're not staying sharp. This keeps us sharp. You know, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, sanctification in a, in a little bit. Um, about preparation, about staying in shape. A couple, couple things just recently, uh, friends of mine, um, one, one guy, a good friend of ours, uh, he just sent us an email saying, I've got to, I've got to get a triple bypass and the sooner the better. Okay. Good guy. He's about my age. He's pretty, he's pretty scared. Okay. He's pretty scared. And then any of us should be, if we have a, you know, we're going under the knife. Um, but, uh, heart ailments and stuff, uh, run in his family. And uh, um, he's he's kind of an overweight guy, not superly overweight, but kind of sort of lived pretty much a sedentary lifestyle. Haven't hasn't had too much physical preparation. Captain hasn't kept his body in shape. He loves to eat. <laughs> um, good guy, but his email was interesting because. A lot of this email, not just telling us that he's, he's going to have this triple bypass and what doctor he has and stuff, but he's talking about his, how much uh, he has come to realize that, even, he even mentioned it, he doesn't believe in evolution, he believes in God, he's really, he's focusing on his spiritual aspect of his life. It's like, wow, it's almost like he expects to die on, on the table. And he wants to clear his, his soul. He wants to make sure that people know that he's a Christian. I, I hope he is. I'm not exactly sure. But um, he, he's clearing his, his, his soul. And he's, he's laying out these. He's, he's not being politically correct because he's saying these things. I was like, wow, he's, he's really kind of coming clean. Okay? It was pretty interesting. Um, uh a lot of us are living with these these things in our lives that uh, make us look to the future and what's going to happen. Um, I know Jan, he's gone through cancer. Um, a lot of us here have had life-threatening events in our life. What happens when that, when that happens? Where we start focusing not on trivial little life things here, you know, start focusing on what's going to happen in the afterlife. You know, some, some bigger, bigger priority things. Okay, it, it means, it, the point is, it's making us think about our priorities. All right? Um, what are my priorities? But we must be sure to keep our priorities in check. Jesus tells us, but seek first the kingdom of God, kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Amen. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. I mentioned this morning a, a thing on our um, in, in our bedroom, a little plaque that says, um, "Don't worry about tomorrow. God is already there." Okay, and it's like, yeah, He's already there. He's outside of time. He's got things planned out. That's not to say that we don't, we just, uh, okay. Uh, 
whatever. I don't need to do anything because God's going to take care of it. Okay? I don't need to pay my mortgage. I don't need to pay my you know, car payment. Ah, it's whatever it is. No, that's kind of a laissez-faire attitude. No, we, we need to do what we need to do. We need to prepare. Okay? But let's not fret and worry about it because, you know, God is in control. But we need to, we need to do what, he, you know, what God tells us to do. Matthew 6, 33 and 34 says, Jesus says, don't worry about food, drink clothing, or my next 10K time. God knows, God knows that we need these things, okay? He, he knows we need food, clothing, all these things. But don't, don't worry about it like, like that's the main focus, okay? I'm going to get into a little thing here about the old saying, and, and Danny, I, I got this from you, Dan, uh, your old uh, Victor Coach. He said, we have a saying, practice makes perfect. Okay, practice makes perfect. Um, and, your, and your coach says, no, practice doesn't exactly make perfect. It's more like practice makes permanent. Okay, you see, if we perform the same task over and over, that task becomes refined fixed, embedded, more like muscle memory. But if it's flawed to begin with, okay, if that practice isn't correct, we're just refining it and cementing that flaw. Okay, if we know of a better way, do it. Okay? In Christianese, this is called sanctification, or being set apart, growing or becoming more holy, or like Jesus. Okay? That is the better way. If we're doing something wrong, don't keep doing that wrong thing over and over again. All right? We need to mm, get in the Word. Okay? What, is, what does Jesus tell us to do? What does what's God tell us to do? Okay? We need to do that. 2 Peter 3.18 says, But we grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. 1 Peter 3.15 but sanctify your, the Lord God in your hearts and be ready to always to give an answer to every man that asks us, asking, King James, you will reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and in fear. In other words, change your hearts to be more Christ-like. This takes practice. Don't become stagnant in doing the same thing over and over if that practice is not sanctifying or growing you closer to Christ. So practicing or training in the physical sense is like running miles in order to gain endurance. Can we compare, and we, we can compare that to the Christian walk, right? For example, do we read, as I mentioned, do we read the Bible passage? How many times have we read a Bible over and over again and say, oh, that's it, I know it? Or do we memorize our time and, and read the Bible daily? A lot of times we'll read a passage again. Oh, wait a second, a little light bulb goes off. Wow, I never noticed that before. That's what it's telling me. Okay? So we need to, we need to go over it and over it. Um, it's not to say that the Bible is written in some kind of hieroglyphics, you know, and, and we don't understand it. No, it's written for the common man. Okay? And we can understand the basic principles. Okay? We need to keep going over that and getting more and more fine points, fine-tuning. Okay? We need to do that with our, with our Christian walk. Some, some deeper meaning or better understanding. So we practice, we study, we strive to do better, to be a better Christian and fellow person to those around us. All right, it's noon. I'm going to stop there. I'm sorry. I only got like three and a half pages. I got 12 more to go. <laughs> to be continued. I'm not sure when because it depends on the schedule and all. But again, there's a lot of parallels to our our. our our physical life, what we want to do, but yet what what we're supposed to do. Okay. Again, we're in we're in a marathon, this this life. We're in this race. Okay? It's not easy. We need to prepare. We need to keep training. Alright? We need to stay focused. A lot of times I'm gonna just mention and I'll have this later. I've gotten in some of my longer races, you know, even a there's a five K one time in East East Rochester. I didn't see the runners. I, I wasn't in first place. I was back a little bit. But 
I didn't see a turn, okay? And these other guys turned, and, and I didn't see it, and another runner was with next to me. We went straight. You know, where, where'd everybody go? Where'd everybody go? Oh, I, it's back there. I got to make that turn. So we turned around. We lost some time. It wasn't, it wasn't good. We need to stay focused, okay? Um, we need to f stay focused on Christ. More to continue. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the life that you've given us. We thank you for your word to help us stay on the path, to help us to stay strong, to help us to stay prepared, and to, to focus on you, to be more like you, Lord. Um, we thank you for the, the life, this physical tent that you've given us. Lord, help us to, to keep it in good shape so that we can do more things for you while you have given us time. Uh, we know that uh, your timing is perfect and that uh, we don't know when our finish line on this earth is about to appear. But until that time, Lord, help us to do the best that we can. Help us to focus on you. Help us to reach others so that they may also grow closer to you and be with you forever and ever, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We want to sing. In closing... And what was it? 113. Let's just sing the last verse. And in 113. And let's focus on that. On the, uh, the chorus at the end um, about trophies and a crown. Dismissed. Have a good uh, afternoon.